everyone, it's Diabetic Danica. Welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about a newer system with insulin pumps and CGMs, and it's the Omnipod 5. So, full disclosure, I myself have not personally used the Omnipod 5, but I'm a diabetes educator, I work in a diabetes clinic, and I've had multiple patients now be put on the Omnipod 5, and I've started their pumps, and so I just wanna make sure I tell you guys about it so you know kind of the features of it. So, in the US, there's basically three insulin pumps on the market. There's the Medtronic, there's the Tandem, and Omnipod, and they all now have an automated insulin delivery system, a algorithm where they can automatically adjust insulin levels based on your continuous glucose monitor blood sugar and if it's going up it gives you more if it's going down it gives you less insulin um, and it's just kind of tweaking stuff in the background to adjust accordingly and the idea of these systems is basically to take away some of the work from the person with diabetes um, you still have to bolus for your carbs, you still have to be involved, you still have to change your infusion set and your sensors and everything, but some of the work is being done in the background by it automatically adjusting things for you. And so the hope is that it would prevent some high and some low blood sugars so that you have more time and range. And with this system, just like with any system, you will still have high and low blood sugars, but the idea is to minimize them, decrease the amount, and maybe not be high and low for so long. So what makes the Omnipod unique is that it's a patch pump. So um, I've done videos before on Omnipod, Omnipod Dash, um, and what it looks like, but it's a pod with insulin in it on your body, so it's tubeless. Anyway, all that backstory, but Omnipod 5. One thing to know with Omnipod 5 is there's not that many phones right now that are compatible with the Omnipod 5 app on your phone. So a lot of people are having to use the controller that it comes with, which isn't a huge deal, but it is another device to carry. But you do have to have a phone that is compatible with a Dexcom G6 app. If you don't have a phone that you can use a Dexcom G6 app on, you cannot be in the automated insulin delivery. Thankfully, there's a lot of phones that are compatible with Dexcom. There is a list of all the compatible smartphones on their website. So the way they communicate is kind of interesting. So you have a Dexcom on your body, a Dexcom CGM, and an Omnipod insulin pump. And the two are actually talking to each other and the algorithm is in the pod. So the pod gets CGM data from the Dexcom and that's where the algorithm is where it can automatically adjust the insulin. So you don't have to have your phone or your controller near you to be able to be in automated insulin delivery, but it's still a good idea to have those things. You can get alarms and alerts and be able to bolus. But because those two things are talking, they do recommend that they be within line of sight of each other so they can see each other and make sure that they're not losing connectivity. So compared to the previous versions of Omnipod, the Dash and the one before that, these are a new set of pods and they have the algorithm inside of them, but they're the same size. They look exactly the same as previous pods but they are technically Omnipod 5 ones because they're different on the inside. Another thing that's unique about Omnipod 5's automated insulin delivery is that you can set customizable targets. So um, the other two pumps they're preset the blood sugar targets that it's aiming for but this one you can make 110, 120, 130, 140, or 150. So it's always trying to bring you back down or up to that number. And those customized targets that you're setting can have up to eight segments throughout your day. So you could have a different target set for like day versus night, for example. It's adjusting insulin based on projected blood sugars 60 minutes into the future. Another cool thing about this one is in the bolus screen, like where you're trying to bolus and give more insulin, there's a use CGM button. And if you click that, it brings in not only the CGM value to use in your bolus calculation, but the trend arrow as well. And so if you're going up, it'll give you more insulin. If you're going down, it'll give you less. And that's even in manual mode. So in Omnipod 5, you can be in the automated mode, which is the automated insulin delivery, or just manual mode, which it functions as a normal insulin pump without automation. But you can still use UCGM in manual, and so you'll get that adjustment um, based on your CGM value and your trend arrow. It does also have an activity feature. So if you're going to be active or if you're gonna be doing something that you feel like is gonna be dropping your blood sugar, you can turn on activity and it temporarily increases your target blood sugar to 150 and it's just more conservative with your insulin doses, giving you less insulin while that feature is on. When you're in automated mode with the Omnipod 5, you can be put into auto mode limited, 
which is when it's not getting CGM values. So either you just put on a new sensor and it's in the warm up period or your signal's lost or something like that. Um, and it's just gonna be really conservative with your doses. It's not gonna give you more than the program basal rate. So you're still in automation, but it's limited. Um, but once you get CGM values again, it puts you right back into fully automated mode. One thing though that I've noticed with patients is you can get kicked out of auto mode with Omnipod 5, and I don't feel like that was um, something I noticed in my training or anything like that, but just hearing from patients themselves, if the pump has been giving them a lot of insulin, in its view, a lot of insulin for a certain amount of time, it will ask you to go back in manual mode and you have to be back in manual mode for at least five minutes and then you can go back into automated. And the reason for this I'm assuming is that to get the patient engaged, right? To be able to look and be like, okay, is my sight working? Is my insulin working? Um, how are things looking? And just taking action, maybe checking with a finger stick, drinking water, or taking a manual injection if you have to maybe, I don't know. But that's one thing that I would say is fairly common with the Medtronic insulin pump is getting exited from auto mode. So it surprised me that Omnipod is like that too because the tandem insulin pump isn't. It just keeps you in automated mode um, if you have control IQ on. <laughs> Control IQ is what the tandem automation is called. Similarly to the tandem automation, um, the Omnipod 5, the insulin on board is gonna be reflective of both your bolus insulin and your basal. So if it's been giving you more basal, it'll account for that in your insulin on board, which I think is more accurate in my opinion. More accurate than not taking that into account. When you're in the automated mode, you can't do temporary basals, you can't do extended boluses, you can't even suspend your pump manually, you have to switch back to manual mode to be able to manually suspend. Um, but the nice thing is it's super easy to switch back and forth. So it's in the very top of your menu. It's a button, a couple button presses, touch screen presses um, to get you from manual to automated and vice versa. So it's not hard to do it all. And you can still manually bolus even in automated mode. So you could just choose to give a set amount of units rather than using the bolus calculator. But for the most part, for most people, the bolus calculator is gonna be a good idea because it's taking everything into account. I do like that it's very obvious to see on your main screen screen if you're in automated or manual mode it's in the top right hand corner and so it's blatantly obvious plain English tells you which one you're in I also like that on the main screen you see your Dexcom value the trend arrow and your insulin on board all that is very accessible on your main screen one thing that can be limiting for some people is the fill amount in an Omnipod so the pod can only hold up to 200 units, whereas the other two pumps is 300. And so if you're using higher amounts of insulin, you could go through pods a lot faster and pods are designed to last between two and three days. But if you use all the insulin in there, you have to change it out. So um, just keep that in mind. The fill process for the Omnipod 5 pods is the same as previous pods. So that part will be all very familiar. One thing that can be a little bit confusing when you're first learning about an Omnipod 5 is the two different apps. So you have your Omnipod 5 app and your Dexcom app. They don't directly communicate with each other, but they communicate through the sensor and through the pods which are communicating with each other. And so you're going to use both apps. So the Dexcom app is going to be where you start sensors, where you troubleshoot sensors, where you acknowledge alerts, whereas the Omnipod app is going to be where you start pods, where you bolus, where you acknowledge pump alarms. Um, it will still alarm if it gets a sensor or blood sugar under... 55 but otherwise you know they have two different jobs and they're just working together through the parts on your body so um, having both apps and interacting with both apps is going to be required one thing that i like um, being a diabetes educator is that in the office we can get automatic uploads from the patients um, that are connected with our clinic because there's actually a sim card that comes in the omnipod 5 controller or if you're using your phone, it's a phone, um, so it can automatically send reports to us. So yeah, if you're gonna start an Omnipod 5, just take into account that it does take a little bit of time to learn you. Um, so our rep told us, you know, it's basically a few pod changes before it really gets a feel for how much insulin you need and kind of figuring out your doses and your blood sugars. So give it a little bit of time. So I have written here that the first pod that you wear in Omnipod 5 for the first 48 hours it's auto delivery based on your active basal program. So whatever you have programmed in the pump for your basal rate, since it's still learning you. After that, 
after the first 48 hours, the auto delivery is no longer based on an active basal program, it's an adaptive basal rate. Um, and that continues with each pod change as it continues to learn and adapt with you. So it's actually not going off of your program basal rates anymore after that. Anyway, if you want to take a closer look, they do have an Omnipod 5 simulator app that you can download in your app store if you want to just play around with an example one. But yeah, that's been the newest um, pump on the market lately, at least in the US, and so I figured I might as well give you kind of the basics of it. And so far, the people that have started on it um, in my clinic, the clinic I work at, it's not my clinic, so far the people that have started it where I work have all really liked it. Um, there's been varied results in terms of blood sugar control, but I mean, the person does still have to interact. They have to bolus for their food. They have to pre-bolus for their food, typically 10 to 15 minutes, um, change sites consistently. You know, all that kind of stuff um, does make a difference. And also people's diabetes is just different. It does vary between people, so. But overall, I haven't had anybody um, not like it or want to switch back from it. And um, a lot of people have had really good results and really liked what the pump does, so. Yeah, just thought I would share this video is in no way sponsored. I have no affiliation with Omnipod 5, but new technology is always really exciting to me in the diabetes world. So hope you enjoyed it. If there's anything that you've noticed about Omnipod 5, either from wearing it or reading about it that I didn't mention, obviously this is not comprehensively everything, um, feel free to leave it in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I make diabetes videos and give this video a thumbs up. Thanks guys, bye. <laughs>